What's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. So for those of you that's been with me for a very long time, you already know this, but those of you that are new, I actually started my YouTube channel with fishing videos and that's exactly what this video is gonna be about. I'm preparing for my first tournament of the year. It's at Lake Norman in North Carolina and I have all of this gear, seven fishing poles, all of this gear here to pack in that little bag and then that's all my rain gear right there. Anyhow, this is how I'm preparing. This is how I'm packing as a co-angler. So stay tuned. Video, I have Winnie walking around in this room. So if she comes in the video, just make sure you say hi. Anyhow, I'm gonna be showing you how I'm using this bag. It's a High Sierra Pathway 50, 50 liter hiking backpack. And I'm using it as a co-angler to fish this weekend's tournament on Lake Norman in North Carolina. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is the essential items. And that is my, all my tackle. So I have a few different boxes I'm gonna take. The very first one is all my terminal tackle. I've tried to condense this. Winnie's trying so hard to figure out what this box is. I've tried to condense this box and I just can't do it confidently. This is my go-to terminal thing. I, I can't get away from it. It's a huge box. As a co-angler, I don't recommend taking this big of a box, but I personally can't get away from it, so it's in the bag. My next tackle box I'm taking is a Plano waterproof storage uh, 3700 series and what this is I don't know if you can tell from that backside a bunch of jigs chatterbaits my favorite and most used jig trailers and this one should be used a lot if it's not then I guess I'm hurting for a bite one of my favorite boxes to use uh, just fishing in general I'm not just talking about co-angler right now is a lure lock box and you can see this is what I usually use for my lipless but any hard bait that you have I recommend these lure lock boxes because they have that I don't know what it's called and you can look it up but it sticks to your bait and it doesn't leave any residue but anyhow this box is being packed it's all my hard baits on the very top I have some jerk baits then I have some square bill crankbaits speed traps uh, some moderate crankbaits some random crankbaits, a lot of lipless crankbaits on the bottom. And then I do have just a couple top waters and a couple like swim bait, glide bait style things, just in case I see that as being useful. I don't, but I'd rather have it instead of not have it. But anyhow, that's all my hard baits that I'm taking. And other than jerk baits, I'm really not much of a hard bait fisherman. Usually it's more finesse or spinner bait type of deal, which is what this next box is. It's my spinner bait box. It's a Plano box made specifically for spinner baits and wire baits. Uh, what I've done is I've taken all my buzz baits out of her and I've only put my spinner baits in it. I also have Alabama rigs in it and that should be a huge player this weekend. However, you can't bank on throwing that as a co-angler all the time because you don't know the conditions you're going to get to fish, but I will have a couple with me. I can easily rig them up, throw them on the pole, start casting, and then just hope to get a big bite. But anyhow, that's the four boxes there. My last box is just a bunch of swim baits. It can be used as swim bait trailers, uh, but know, know the water where you're fishing, right? I'm going to Lake Norman in North Carolina, spotted bass like crazy, and I can use these as a trailer on a spinner bait, on, the, on a chatter bait uh, by itself or on an Alabama rig. But you know, if you didn't know this, sp spotted bass go crazy for swim baits. So anyhow, that's gonna make the cut. I'm gonna set it right here just for a second because I want to show you one other thing that's going in this big compartment. And that are, that are these back rack pole holders. I think that's what they call them. I don't know. Anyhow, back rack's a brand. If you look it up, you'll definitely find them. I'll also put a link to these in the description down below. But these are a go-to for a lot of co-anglers, especially in the higher levels of fishing. And what they do is they set on the back of the compartment of the boat. And when you shut that compartment down, there's a groove right here and when it shuts down and you lock that compartment, or at least twist lock it, these aren't going anywhere. So the idea is you put your poles in these grooves, and then I'm gonna show you the interior. Each one has one of these rubber cords, and once your poles are in there, you can lock them in to be even more secure. But anyhow, I'm really, really excited to use these this weekend. Those are going into my big compartment as well. And you gotta remember, some of this stuff won't stay packed all day. It's really just to get on the boat. For example, if I get on the boat and I have an extra compartment in the back, most boaters give you one, but you can't depend on it. 
if they give you one, I can take those. Those were gonna come out anyways, but I can take my big box out or I can take a couple of my go-to boxes out. That way they're quicker to access. But right now, I mean, I can get in and out of here very quick, get what I need, put it back in and start fishing. So I've already showed you this swim bait box. It just goes on top right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shut and zip this up. And that's it for all my tackle. No, it's not. I have soft plastics. I forgot all about those. They're right here beside me. And those are going in a unique area. So I told you this was a hiking backpack. And at the bottom of a lot of hiking backpacks, they have storage for a, a tent, sleeping bag, something like that. I'm not a hiker. I'm not sure what they're all used for, but I think these are really used for sleeping bags. And I put all my soft plastics into a Plano KVD bag. I love these things, definitely recommend them. Uh, if, you're, if you like soft plastics, get a few. You'll be amazed how much storage it saves. But what I'm gonna do is put this in this little, little area here. And this will be a lot like what I just now said. This will be one of those items I might go ahead and take off especially if I do have a compartment in the boat. That way I don't have to do this every time because I definitely won't do this every time. And then I'll just put it tight and start tightening up these straps. That's all she wrote. She ain't going anywhere like that. I can make her a little tighter if I wanted to. Yeah, what do you think about that, Lenny? You like that? But anyhow, that is literally all my tackle for this weekend. You saw the hard boxes, you saw the soft plastic box. Now let's get into the accessories and some of the other compartments of this bag. This compartment right here opens way up and I don't have it with me because I keep it in certain spots like in my vehicle and stuff. But my wallet, my truck keys, as a co-angler you might have to hold on to your boater's keys all day if you have to drive their vehicle. That's going to go in this compartment right here. I have a decent sized pocket here but then I have these mesh pockets to really hold things to keep from going all over the place. So that's where my keys will go. But I can still put some stuff in there because the keys don't take up that much space. My wallet don't take up that much space. My pliers will go in there. These are some casking pliers and regular pliers, but on the side right here, they have little blades and scissors. I don't know if you can see that or not. Put my hand there just to help you see. I will put those right there. It is going to be cold this weekend. I just looked at the weather again. The high, the high temperature is 46 degrees. I get cold easily, so I'm taking a bunch of hot hands. These are my go-to. I love them. Uh, they, they easily fit right here. And you gotta think, I'm gonna be using a pack or two here and there on Saturday, so that will get even lower if I was worried about that taking up too much space. I'll be wearing one, but in case I forget it in my truck, uh, in case I drop it, in case it blows off for some reason, an extra toboggan. Like I said, extra, because I'm taking another one with me. And I went into the very bottom of that, by the way. Beef jerky, my favorite snack, uh, to take on the water at least, my favorite snack. Some almonds, and because of the beef jerky and almonds together, those are really gonna hold you over for a long time and make you feel where you're not hungry. Uh, very good combo. Plus, I just really love the Blue Diamond Salt and Vinegar Almonds. If they're looking for somebody's sponsor, I'm their guy, because I keep them in business. But anyhow, these will go all in that little compartment I showed you. And quick tip, I might actually take these out and put them into a sandwich bag just to save on space because this is a hard box. But uh, anyhow, just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. And I think it's everything that's gonna go in that compartment. compartment. So I have three compartments left. And one of them is right here. This is a little pouch. And a lot of fishing bags have this, but like I said, this is a hiking bag. So I didn't know what to expect really looked it over had a lot to compare of i'm going to put my sunglasses in this case and i take two let's see get them facing the right way i get two coasted sunglasses i take with me one of them's for the bright days and one of them's for the overcast rainy style days and that might be overkill you might just be able to get away with one but uh that's something i take pretty seriously is protection of the eyes on the water just the way the glare and everything works but anyhow these will go in here and they should fit very, very comfortably and easily. I might turn them this way. And then just an extra, it cleanses, cleans your lens or my camera lens, anything like that. It will go in there for quick access. Since I'm going down Saturday, 
I will be able to practice a little bit. And then on Sunday morning, we're gonna leave the hotel and I'll, I'll go ahead and put this chest mount on, but just for the sake of it, just to show you that I have plenty of space to pack it, I'm gonna pack it. And then I have my GoPro that will be on that, my GoPro Hero 8. That will go in this compartment as well. And you can see that's plenty of space there. My extra GoPro is a Hero 5. It's in case the 8 stops working for any reason whatsoever. Extra memory card. And an extra charger. And it does start getting a little tight. There's no line there. And then one more thing is, this is actually how I power my cameras while I'm fishing. Uh, not all the time, but most of the time as a co-angler or if I'm worried about storage or anything like that. I just now actually turned it on, so I'm trying to turn it off. It might stay on. But it has an anchor, external battery charger, and I'll show you the back of it too in case you're looking for the exact one. But anyhow, this is like $69.99 at Target. It's where I bought it. I'll put a link to it in the description. And this thing is awesome. It, I took it hunting with me this year. I didn't kill anything, had horrible hunts. Had a good time, don't get me wrong, but didn't have anything to make a video off of. And I never charged it on Mon since Sunday night. And then I used it Monday morning all the way until Friday morning, maybe Saturday morning. And it never even got below 50%. So that thing is the bomb. Definitely recommend it. And let's see. Got to twist it around a little bit. There we go. I will be wearing these. These are some gloves. I actually have another pair of gloves. If you go look at my last video on Lake Norman, it was last year around the same time. I went as a boater. Uh, I wore other gloves. I wore the Monkey Fish, Fish Monkey. Fish Monkey, I think is the name of the brand. I wore the Fish Monkey woolly gloves, the half fingers, I love them. I forgot them in my boat. So I made a trip out to Bass Pro or Cabela's I should say, and I picked up these 100 mile per hour, picked up these 100 mile per hour gloves and they're really cool. They have a mitten on them and you can also cover up your thumb. They have a zipper for easy on, easy off on the sides if it's too tight. But just to show you, my thumb's covered or I can take it and put it underneath this little strap right here and it's not covered anymore. But if I want to cover it up, maybe you're going down the lake for a long run, you can cover it up, get to where you're fishing and you can actually snap it. And that's, I'm really impressed with these so far. I can't wait to try them out. But uh, I paid a little extra for them to get the Gore-Tex. It's a pretty sweet looking. I hope they hold up as well as they should. But anyhow, those will probably be worn that morning because it's going to be cold in the morning. It's going to be like 25 degrees. I'm going to open up the big compartment again because that's where these are going to go if I'm taking them off. And I'm going to shut it just to show you that there's no issue there. And now I just have a couple more things, a couple extras. I'm going to use these side pockets for. And this one first extra I'm going to show you is definitely debatable about being necessity or a non-essential item. And that is an extra reel. The reason I'm taking one is because I'm not taking any specific crankbait style reels. I plan to just reel slower. But if I see that I'm reeling too fast or maybe I mess up one of my lines because I can't cast, I'm not a pro, I could easily just change it out to a slower reel or vice versa. If you have a lot of slower reels, you take a faster one. You can easily just change it out to a faster speed ratio. Other side pocket. I take some extra fishing line. I think this is a must. You don't have to take a lot. But I take K or a P line, 15 pound. This is for my jigs. Any moving bait if I want that. And then if I wanted to downsize, I take my K9 100%. Have to make sure we know this is the K9 fluoro 10 pound test line. And it's fluorocarbon, but it has that nanotechnology into it. They do have 100% fluorocarbon as well, but that's not what this one is. This is 10 pound K9 fishing line, and this is also my main line that I use on my spinning setups. So I use a braid to fluoro combination. That's what I use at the end of it. So I'm gonna pack these in this side compartment. And that's it guys, that is literally everything plus some stuff I probably won't even pack because I'll be wearing it. And then I don't know if you can see, but right here behind me I have an extra thing of beef jerky for the other day of fishing. And then all my rain gear, Definitely gonna be wearing it because it's gonna be so cold in the morning. 
But anyhow, I'm taking these seven poles laid off to the side. I have three spinning setups I'm taking with me and four casting setups of so seven poles all together, one bag. I'll see you on the water. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see the tournament video. I'm gonna do a Saturday and a Sunday video combination. No matter how good or how bad I finish, there will be a video. So anyhow, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.